This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Vargas versus McManus. You all have been together for four years and are living together. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. Ms. Vargas, you've come to court today with some very specific allegations. Tell us why you're here. Well, I'm here to find out to see if my future husband is sleeping with my sister-in-law or anybody else. With your sister-in-law or anybody else? Correct. It's one thing if it's a woman, but your future sister-in-law, his sister-in-law, that has a whole other level to it. It's hard to deal with. It makes me feel crazy. It is a very big problem. Yeah. I don't have any, any desire to be with my sister-in-law. <laughs> I only have eyes for one woman, and that woman is standing right there to the right side of me. So, Mr. McManus, what do you hope to prove today? I hope to prove that I'm not lying to her and that um, we get our future going together back where we need to go. I want to get married to her and I want to be with her the rest of my life. Right. Does it make a difference whether it's another woman or a sister-in-law? Well, you know, let's, let's just break this down. <laughs> break it down. Bre <laughs> break it down. Break it down so it'll be broke forever. There you go. If it's another woman, she's going to be out of your life if you get past this. But your sister-in-law is family. That's a whole different animal. And I can tell this has put a strain between the two of you. Yes, ma'am, it has. I'll leave the house sometimes, go for a walk down to the lake or something, and then, of course, she says I'm going down there to meet somebody else. And, hey, it breaks my heart. It tears me apart that she just won't listen to me and believe that I'm telling her the truth. Well, it wasn't always like that, I'm sure. No. No, no. Okay. No. So how did you two meet? At my job. She's okay. a stripper, was a stripper at the time. Oh! <laughs> All right, okay. tell me about that. I just got out of a relationship, and I decided I want to go check, you know, out with another woman or women or have some fun, <laughs> let loose a little bit. So you set yourself free. Yes, And yes, you were going to go and see what freedom tasted like. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. That's uh, one way to do it. So, Ms. Vargas, what did you do to actually come in contact with him? Well, I... Well, wait, I, now, I, I mean, that's... <laughs> club, you, can you... I know exactly what I'm asking, Mr. Cutler. Let this lady answer the question. I know, I know you what sure? I'm... You sure? I you got know this. You... I got this. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Vargas. He was really different from all the other guys that were there. I've never sat with somebody who was real gentle, didn't touch me, like, wasn't grabby, didn't, you know... He, so, he was really different. He was very smart. He's like an encyclopedia. You got all this at the sh I'll while interacting say. at the strip club? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I've seen say. strip clubs on television. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer, Mr. Collins. And there really isn't a lot of dialogue about, you know, world events going on. How do you know that? I've seen strip clubs on television. Okay. I've seen them in the movies. And... I'm just verifying. Okay. But there really isn't a lot of discussion about world events and all that. How did you make this connection. Well, when I called him, we met at a restaurant. It was an, an, an official date. We got drunk and <laughs> <laughs> went to the hotel well, and well, I wrapped him. He doesn't I, remember. I, I drove him to the hotel. By anybody's <laughs> standard, that's a good date. Come on, you gotta... <clears throat> Mr. Cutler, I'm not going there with you. <laughs> I, I'm like, that's a good date. Now, come on. Just, I what, don't know. Tell, let's hear from Mr. McManus. Was it a good right. date for you? It was, absolutely. <laughs> okay. What did you like about her? Well, she, one thing, she's drop-dead gorgeous. I mean... I wake up, I'm so proud to wake up next to her every morning and look at her. She looks gorgeous when she rolls out of bed. All right. Why um, do you believe he's cheating with his sister-in-law? When, when she comes around, I mean, nothing stops for her. He goes and gets her things or we'll be playing dice and they can have a conversation for 10 minutes and I'll just be there in the background just you looking at You cut yourself out of that conversation. How do I cut myself out if you guys oh, are well, looking at each other and not looking at me? Is it true that you're attentive to your sister-in-law? I'm attentive to any guest that comes to my house. I understand that. I'm asking you something different. <laughs> are you attentive to your sister-in-law? Like any normal that guest that comes to my quote, house. Yes. Attentive. But there, it's two flirtatious personalities getting together and it creates, creates a bomb sometimes, I think. So. Okay, so that would be... And Innocent, right? I would think so, but it goes over... You know, the, you know there's a... You, you're supposed to stare at a person, like, so many seconds. Well, it goes over and beyond. And your gut is saying... It's screaming. Your gut is screaming mm -hmm. that this is not just, like, Every ha, day. ha, ha. It's yeah. another level to it. Is this one right. of those women's intuition things? It is. 
Mm-hmm. It's not always and, and right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And don't say it like that either. I mean, anybody looking at that would think, well, they're just, you know, naturally flirtatious. And she's saying there's something that I'm just getting this feeling. So that's why I'm asking, is it okay. whether to do it? There, there's more to this story. Watch this, watch this. Have you ever caught them communicating with each other? Yes. Uh-huh. Well, they say hi. Uh, wait, wait, wait. When, what have you caught? I would think it was her, but on the phone together. But when I asked her, she told me no. She denied it. Okay, well, but how do you know that they I were talking? I've seen it on records, on the phone. Our phones are linked because They're of the linked. plan we're on. So she downloaded Somehow. an app that's supposed to read files. So I go in there and look at it when she's accusing me, and I say, well, that's your phone number making the no, call. That's no. your phone number making the text. And it wasn't just for my number. My number was there, but his number was there also. And so what you've seen on that tracking is that his number and her number are talking to each other. Correct. But All what right? about when so she that's... uses my phone to call my sister-in-law? Why would I do that if I had my own phone? Your phone's dead. True that. No. <laughs> so it's their family, so they're talking. <laughs> or no, 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 but you remember when you went women's intuition thing, and I said, uh-uh, it's more to it than that. And she said they're communicating, and the sister-in-law is denying this communication, which ramps up yes, your, your, your belief. Mm-hmm. What else do you have? Uh, in the bathroom, I had noticed I was putting up clothes and I could hear. So I opened up the clothes and I listened more. And he's like, it's okay, honey. All right, okay. And then he's telling me, I'm like, who are you talking to? And he's like, nobody. I'm talking to myself. I'm like, why are you cutting yourself off in mid-sentence? But do you you call yourself honey? No, and I (laughs) think she she thinks she has this uh, supersonic hearing that she's developed. It's a really thin wall. I mean, you can hear everything. When I'm taking care of my personal business in there, I'm not going to talk on the phone. The question is, Mr. McManus, when she's in another room, why are you talking on the phone in such a way where it's like... But she's getting that impression. I don't know where she gets that from. All right, going back to the women's intuition, because okay. I'm, 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 I'm stuck there, Mr. Cutler. Have you seen any behavioral changes? Absolutely. OK, absolutely. tell me about that. And moreover, tell Mr. Cutler about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the bedroom, we like to watch porn, you know, to get motors running, get it started. <laughs> Get the party started. And I started noticing the different kinds of porn that was coming up. Okay. You know, the BBW, it's, you know... Big, beautiful women. Big, beautiful women, I started noticing. And he just... That that was just recently. So, so what then has gone up to BBW? Well, it's just something different, you know? I'm not used to it. Miss Vargas, let me ask you a question. Uh Uh-huh. Is your sister-in-law full figure? Yes, she is. She's beautiful. Ah! Beautiful. So that's the, qu- that's the that's connection. That's the connection. See, Mr. Yeah. Cutler, there's a, there's a three-step push to her gut screaming. There it is. And that's all part of the women's intuition. Now, would you agree that your sister lost full figure? Um, not in my eyes. <laughs> and has there been a switch in your watching, viewing no. tastes? No. All right, well, Mr. consistent. No. Been consistent. Well, there's her side, there's his side, and there's the sister-in-law side. And we have the sister-in-law here today. That's fine. That's good. We gonna find out. Have a seat, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Would you state your name for the court, please? Uh, Jennifer McManus. And Ms. McManus, how are you familiar with our litigants? Uh, Daniel is my brother-in-law, and Janine is uh, my friend and my soon-to-be sister-in-law. And do you understand why you are here? Uh, I believe I do. All right. (laughs) All right. Now, can you tell me why Ms. Vargas believes that you are, in fact, sexually active with her fiancé? Well, I, I believe that Miss Vargas has a low self-esteem from past relationships that she's been in. I'm sorry that I'm a voluptuous, good-looking woman. <laughs> and every man wants me. What can I say? I'm proud of myself. I just wish every woman was as confident as I. Well, <laughs> well, Miss McManus, Miss Vargas has indicated that there's a special connection that you have with Mr. McManus, the way you all talk, the way you interact. What is that special connection? Well, I've never really thought of it as a special connection because I treat him just like I treat every man, uh, with kindness, 
compassion, love. I like to have a good time, laugh, joke, carry on, um, tell a few dirty jokes. <laughs> uh, you know, um, and I just draw people into me. Miss Vargas has said she has testified today that she's asked you, do you talk to Mr. McManus on the phone? And she said, you've denied it. And then she finds on phone records that you have, in fact, talked to him. Do you talk to him on the phone? No, I do not talk to him. For one reason, he will not talk to me because I guess she gives him attitude about whoever he's talking to. May it be no one, because I really don't believe that he is talking to anyone. I think that it's in her mind that mm. she's convinced her own self that there's something going on and there's not. All right. I'm going to just ask you point blank. Are you in a relationship with your brother-in-law? Uh, no, Your Honor, I am not. Are you in a sexual relationship with your brother-in-law? Uh, no, Your Honor, I am not. I'm sexually happy where I, right where I'm at. With, <laughs> with, with his brother? Yes, ma'am. Mr. McManus, I noticed in your court papers that you left for two weeks. She left for two weeks. She left for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were several times I left. Last All because October. you believe he's cheating with your sister? Yeah, if it's not her, then it's, it has to be somebody else. Right. I mean, something's going on with somebody. And you are convinced Talking. of that? Yeah, I'm convinced. So when you came back after leaving for two weeks, mm -hmm. what happened? Well, I came back and I saw some hand soap that only comes from the shop that she works at. It's, it was a brand new bar of soap and I, I didn't put it there. So Nobody. you... That was proof to you That's... that your sister-in-law had been in the home... <clears throat> Correct. While you were gone. Yeah. Your Honor, we carried bar soap probably two years ago. So if they had that bar soap, they've had it for two years. <laughs> <laughs> so but it, it wasn't it, because you had been at the house no, during that time period. No. So is that woman's intuition when it you leave and come back house. and you notice something that was already there? I don't know what that is. I can't speak to that. But clearly, Miss Vargas... Was... Miss Vargas believes that there was proof she was there or that the, the relationship is continuing. And you say that if you find out he is, in fact, having a relationship outside of yours, this relationship is done. It is done. Mr. McManus, it's not looking good. No, it's not, but I'm, yeah. I'm not lying to this woman. Like I said, I'm ready to go the distance with her. Here's the evidence that we've seen so far. That you're giving your sister-in-law extra attention, you all have the special connection that you have, you're on the phone in a secretive manner, where she hears you whispering, Miss Vargas leaves for two weeks, comes back, there is soap and other products in your bathroom that come from the same place where your sister-in-law works. They were already there before. This court has done a full and complete investigation to determine, is Mr. McManus cheated <laughs> with his sister-in-law? At this time, the court would like to call licensed and certified polygraph examiner Tommy Platt into the courtroom. Ron, would you please escort him in? Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Platt. Good morning. Welcome. Could you please state your credentials for the court record? I have 30 years experience in the United States military and law enforcement. I have been a licensed polygraph examiner for 10 years, and I've conducted nearly 3,000 polygraph examinations. So a little bit of experience a little under bit. your belt. You performed a polygraph on Mr. McManus, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. You asked Mr. McManus, during your four-year relationship with Ms. Vargas, have you ever had sexual intercourse with your sister-in-law? That's correct. What was his response? He stated no. What did the polygraph reveal? The polygraph determined that he was being truthful. Now, I see the tears of... Is that happiness? Yeah. Is that relief? Yes. What's going through your mind? <sighs> I'm just happy you're telling the truth, both of y'all. But we do have one more question. Uh -huh. Mr. McManus was asked, during your four-year relationship with Ms. Vargas, have you had sexual intercourse with any other woman? What was his response to that question? He stated no. What did the polygraph determine? The polygraph determined that he was being truthful.
Ms. Vargas, mm -hmm. you came here for the truth. You've gotten it. Mr. McManus, I am so glad. I see the tears in your eyes. Tell me about that. Oh, I'm so happy. Uh, now we can move past this and... Um, there's one thing I'd like to say, though, before we adjourn from this. Ms. Julie Jeanine Vargas, would you do me the honor, privilege, <laughs> of letting me, letting you guide your stars, guide me to our relationship to our oh, final boy. destination so we can end this ride together? It's okay. I love you. You all are married. You've been together for 11 years, but the turmoil that's in your house right now is driving a wedge between you all, and what happens today will determine whether that turmoil continues. Is that right, Ms. Baker? That's right, Your Honor. Right. You've initiated this case today. Tell us why you're here. Oh, well, I think my husband's been cheating on me. Um... He started going to social media a lot when before he used to despise it and he'd make fun of me for being on it. Um, he will go to the grocery store, which is like five minutes from our house and he'll be gone for hours at a time. <laughs> when I call him or text him, he won't answer or respond. And he started wearing this cologne that I hate and stopped wearing the cologne that I love. And when I asked him about it, told him that I hate this cologne, he still wears it, and uh, it makes me think he's wearing it because for some other woman. She's crazy. Ah, ah. Yeah. You've heard the allegations against you. Yeah. Are you cheating on Ms. Baker? No, sir, I'm not. Are you sure? I'm positive. Uh, Your Honor, I didn't know there's a time limit to go grocery shopping, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, cologne, she said she like it, and she don't like it, you know what I'm saying? She can't become right up. Um, she's driving herself crazy, Your Honor. And in the process, she's driving you crazy. Oh, they, oh yeah, the bottom line, was when she sniffed my crotch. That was it, dude. Uh, she's real, and uh, she sniffed into... your crotch. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, yep. sniffer, Mr. Cutler. Uh huh. That we... was that was that was a wrap. I knew stuff was real, and uh, we need to fix it. You know what I mean? What happened with that? All right. I come home from work. You know, I didn't say, "Honey, I'm home." I just opened the door, and she's like, "Boom." No. Your crotch. No. <laughs> Let yeah. me sniff okay. your crotch. Yeah. She goes. She, goes, she he... where are you at? We, we took you so long. You know, get home. You know, and he uh, didn't come home from work. He came home from walking the dog. Tell me what happened when he hit the door. When he came in, he was drenched in sweat. I'm like, why are you so sweaty? And he gave me three different excuses of why he was so sweaty before settling on one. And I'm like, why do you keep changing your mind about why you're sweaty? Like, first he said, it's because I came up the stairs. I don't think so. You're not that out of shape. Okay. And then he said, it's <laughs> hot outside. No, you just told me it was cold outside. Okay. And so it, it just didn't, it didn't fit. So I was like, you had sex. You must be sweaty from having sex. I checked it out. That's all it wow. matters, right? Wow. And so you just said, let me just drop them? And... Yeah, let me smell it. Oh, oh, boy. So, Mr. Okay. Baker, is this what you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis? Yes, sir. Yep. All right, so, Ms. So Ms. Baker, you said that Mr. Baker is now active on social media, and that in the beginning, he used to kind of poo-poo you about it, correct? Right. Now no. he's the man on social media. Right. Tell me about what you're seeing on social media. What have you seen? Well, I would hear um, the notifications going off, like somebody was sending him a message. And he also has um, dating profiles with different websites. How um, did you find that out? Because I installed a spyware app on his phone, and so there's nothing. So and how'd you do that? Did you just, one night when he was sleeping, you just downloaded, or what'd you do? <laughs> That's right, exactly like that. She has uh, access. <laughs> so he's, he's sleeping, minding his business, you go and sneak the phone, and you yeah. download the, the spyware app, and that's when the fun began, right? Yep, and it would tell me what, no, he couldn't do anything on his phone without me knowing. Exactly. She did so much stuff to my phone, it short-circuited it, man. I mean, like, it's ruined, <laughs> dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't even have the phone for months now, and it's still calling her, you know? Okay. okay, wait, wait, wait. Here's the thing. You submitted the uh, dating profile that you found on the app. Is That's that right. correct? All right, and this is it. It says, Mr. Baker, straight female, no, looking, looking for. for straight female, by female, status married, race white, build round and cuddly, <laughs> height 5'6". Is that you, Mr. Baker? Did you submit that? No. What else have you found? Because I know this ain't it. If you got spyware there, what else have you found with this spyware? Whenever somebody unlocks the phone, it'll take a screenshot selfie, like a front camera selfie, okay. of anybody who unlocks the phone. And one day, 
I found a screenshot of a woman, a woman's face. And it wasn't yours. And I actually have have that right here. All right. Rod, can you please get that? So this this app that you install takes a picture of anybody who unlocks the phone. Right. And so the only picture that should be showing up is Mr. Baker's. That's right. Because he should be the only one who's unlocking his phone. Yep. All right, and so the picture shows a woman's lips, a nose, and her eyes. Is that correct? Yep. And that was not you? Nope. It's... And it unlocked at 8.21 in the morning. I, I don't even know what you're looking at right there. You see a nostril and a mouth. You don't see no long hair? That looks like a woman, Mr. Baker. You can dance around it all you want to. That looks like a woman. Okay, well, it looks like even, even if it's a woman, your phone. It, she had to have unlock in my phone, for one, and it, nobody would have had that information other than her or my Exactly. Kids. I think that where you're going is just going to be a dead end. So here's my question. Right. What's the other woman? Did you find another woman's picture on the phone? Unlocking yes. it? Yes. Well, not unlocking it. On Christmas Day, um, he was downstairs and he was very quiet. He usually makes a lot of noise. And so I thought to myself, well, what's he up to? So um, I got on the spyware app to see what was going on on his phone. And there was a picture of a woman's breasts. For Christmas? Yeah. The gift that keeps on giving, right? Oh, and I have that, too. Okay. Rod, can you get that picture? I mean, she came prepared for course. She's got her evidence lined up. He said he didn't know her, that it was... It must have been a wrong number. And what? so I decided to text her. So... And she said the same thing, that it was a wrong number yeah. and that she meant to send it, send it yeah, to see, her Yeah, see, I've never seen that picture in my life. Never. You have no... Your testimony, nope. you have no idea who's Never seen it, this. never seen it on my phone, no recollection, nothing. It wasn't even brought it up to me. Never That's brought it up. That's not true. Yes, and you up. texted this woman, and Diane she said, oops, ever brought, brought my up. bad, I, I didn't mean to send it to your husband. Right, right. And you were like, I bet. Yeah, and uh -huh. later on, she actually sent a link to her live sex cam. Oh. And you saw that because of the spyware you observed. That's right. So it wasn't a mistake that this picture came out because... I don't think so. I never this must pictures. have been a lousy Christmas. Yeah, it sucked, yeah. You plan to open gifts and this is what you end up opening. That must have been bad. And here's the thing. This is terrible. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like, is there anything else that you could have found or would lead to or support your position that Mr. Baker's cheating? Yeah, one time I was snooping through his truck and I found a letter from a motel chain saying, congratulations, you've reached gold status. And um, we hadn't stayed in any motels recently. And whenever we stayed at motels in the past, it was always under my name, under my account. And I actually have um, that letter for you, too. Of course she does. I know she does. <laughs> right. You were going through his truck, and you found this letter in his truck. And this is from a hotel chain. And the letter reads, Dear Richard, that's you, Mr. Baker, right? Yep. Dear Richard, congratulations. You've reached gold status. Yes, sir. Your business means a lot. <laughs> we want to make sure you are blank, blank rewarded. Your Honor, she kicked me out all the time. I had no place to stay, so I stayed in motels. According to her, it was for four months. I recall about a month. How, however, it was $1,000 a week to stay at a motel. Well, guess what? I bought a boat, okay? And then all of a sudden, Mama wants me home now. You know what I'm saying? Because I got girls over there, so on and so forth. So you believe that these hotel stays are with other women? Yes. Right. And not only has he done it regularly, he's done it to get to gold status. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not cheating on her. We need to save this marriage. You know what I mean? We're going on 12... 13 years now, okay? All right, so, so you are in this to win it. You are in here I'm, to I'm save your marriage. I'm grateful for you guys, you know, helping, helping me out. If this is what it takes to, to prove to her or to let her know the truth, then this is what we need to do, you know? But I'm not, I, I'm not dealing with it no more. I can't take it anymore, you know? Just okay, so you're but, out. You're done. I'm done. And Ms. Baker, you're saying, look, there's too much. You got social media. You've got text messages. You got boo pictures for Christmas. You got faces <laughs> popping up on the fa on the screen chat. You have found everything. And for those reasons, you believe Mr. Baker's cheating, and that's why you brought him to my courtroom. And tell me that's all you have. Well, no, um, I also found a period tracker on his phone. Um, when I had our last baby, I had to have an emergency hysterectomy. So yep. whose period is he tracking? Because it's not mine. I, and I and that's a very interesting app to have for yeah. a man. Yeah, yeah, for reals, man. Yeah. <laughs> and you brought that we, with you? We have, we have, we have, have our relationship. Yes. 
at the house in our, in, in our firewood cabinet. Why do we have it there? You know, it, I, I don't, I don't, I'm just playing games, man. Ron, Ron, would you grab that for us, please? Yes, Sean. Okay, so this is an app you found on his phone, and it is... It is for tracking, for tracking ovulation. ovulation. Yes, and I actually found it in his history, not in his phone. Whose cycle are you tracking? <laughs> no and... cycle. There is no cycle. She cycle. <laughs> no, not the psycho. Psycho. I'm, I'm talking. Like I said, like I said, ma'am. I'm not a Hold clue. on, hold on, Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker, I'm asking you a very specific question. Yes, ma'am. Whose cycle ovulation? Mm -hmm. Are you tracking if tra your wife doesn't have one? Ma'am, I'm not tracking nobody. I'm telling you, I did not, I, that, I don't do that. I don't know any of that. You know what I'm saying? The only ovulation thing, and the only reason why I know about it is because we were doing it to, for our last kid. You know what I mean? So you're the, saying We this still have is... the, the, the remainder of that ovulation kit in our filing cabinet, you know? All right, so what you're saying in your testimony, because I want to be clear, is that if this is the if this I have no clue about that. I, that's you don't me. have a clue about it. Not, none. Let me ask you this question. Right. Why was this on your phone in your browsing history? That, how do you know it's on my phone? She said it was in your history. She could say whatever. She never showed me. So you okay. don't believe it was in your history no, on sir, your phone? No, I don't. My phone was possessed. She did. She had so much <laughs> crap going on. My phone shorted out, man. It's weird, dude. It started dropping things, picking things up. You know. So you wouldn't put it past her that if she installed spyware on your phone, she could have done this on your phone just to incriminate <laughs> you. She put so much stuff that it started counterdicting itself. That, I honestly believe that she had so much going on with it in, in all these investigations and all these different apps that it, 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 is, it is started acting all weird. Well, I got to say this, Mr. Baker. I don't know the last time we had a litigant with this much hard evidence to support cheating. I, I, I okay. And because of that, at this time, the court would like to call former expert military interrogator Lena Sisko to find, is he cheating? <laughs> Ron, please report her in. For the record, would you please state your credentials? Yes, Your Honor. I am a former military interrogator. I was deployed to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba shortly after 9-11, where I interrogated members of Al-Qaeda and Taliban. I am certified by the Department of Defense. All right. Mr. Baker, I look at you. You got that podium on either side. You're looking down. I've seen that look before. That's a look of nervousness about what's going to happen. What am I getting ready to hear? Are you nervous? No, no sir, I'm not. You, you, you have nothing to be nervous about. Nothing, sir. You're not nervous. Nothing. You're cool as the other side of the pillow. Hey, man, say what you want to say. All right. Ms. Baker, you're standing there. You look nervous, too, but probably for different reasons. Yeah, I just, I hope I'm wrong. So if you, you are, find out he's cheating, what's next? Um, I would have to leave him. I would have to. Even though I don't want to, I would have to because, I mean, why would I have to go through this, these kind of lengths to get the truth? Well, Ms. Cisco, could you please share with us what you did to investigate this case? Yes, Your Honor. So I had the accused write out a witness statement and I analyzed that for any indication of truthfulness and deception. And then I interrogated Mr. Baker to see if indeed, if he was lying and cheating. Now you conducted a full investigation. What were your initial findings about how Mr. Baker felt about his relationship with Ms. Baker? Initially, Mr. Baker's body language was very hard to read because it is filled with indicators of stress and anxiety. And when I asked him how he felt being here to prove himself today, he started wringing his hands, which you call a self-pacifying movement. He also leaned back away from me, which can indicate deception. And then he told me that he was very irritated. So I asked him, what is this relationship status? Can it be saved? And I'm gonna quote because he told me, it's borderline, it's getting crazy. Then I asked him if he loved his wife, and he told me, yes, I love my wife. And as he said this, it registered as a very truthful response because number one, he's saying yes, but he used my wife. And when people use that pronoun my, it indicates intimacy and a connection. Hmm. I told you I love you. So when it comes to Mrs. Baker's allegations against Mr. Baker, uh, what did you learn? 
I questioned Mr. Baker about the screenshot of the woman, and he told me, I don't know who she is, I don't know her name, and I don't remember giving my phone to anyone. When I asked him also about the dating apps that are popping up on his phone, he said, I don't click on any of them. I watch porn, they pop up, but I don't access them. So he used contractions. Contractions are indicative of a truthful verbal response. As he was saying this, he also was leaning into me. So truthful people will lean into you and liars will lean away from you. In both those accusations, in regards to both of them, I believe that he was being truthful. So, <clears throat> Ms. Cisco, what was your overall conclusion based on your investigation? So, overall, my conclusion is that he was being very forthcoming with information. He showed no signs of deception, and I believe that he has been faithful to Mrs. Baker. Excellent. Oh, you, President Ron. Well, Mr. Baker, we were able to sniff out the truth, and it smelled <laughs> great. You need to read books better, buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Richard. I'm sorry. All right. Go on over there and show him some love. <laughs> you all have been in a long-term relationship for 10 years, on and off. Yes, Your Honor. And y'all met at the bus stop, so it's really been on and off, correct? <laughs> yes, Your yes. Honor. <laughs> so yes. tell me, why have you brought Mr. Haskell here to this court? Absolutely, Your Honor. I boy him here today. I mean, we've been together for 10 years. I just want to know at this point right now, is he still dealing with his daughter's mom? And is it like other people in our city since he got a little fame recently? Ah. And I want to hear what you're here for. I'm here to prove to Ms. Jones that I'm here for love and that it's not what she believes in her mind. You claim you're being faithful. Yes, I am being faithful. I love her. And it's unconditional. And you think she's being paranoid? Very. It's like, I can understand her paranoia because I am becoming famous. And it's like the groupies. <clears throat> but Fam it's like... Fa famous like what? I'm an R&B singer. Okay. So, you know, it's like... So you blowing up? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, I would love to see him out here doing what he does best. But at the same time, it's not paranoia. I feel like he know. He know he's been doing it. So what's on the line here? Everything. Everything. My sanity, my family. We have two kids together. So your family, your relationship is on the line depending on what happens here today. It really depends on these results. I need them because I know that I might have to walk away. Mr. Haskell, do you want her to walk away? I don't. And that's why I'm here to basically clear the air. We've been together for 10 years. So it's not been a strong 10 years perfect. You're not required to be perfect. Right. Because right. we've been together 35 years total. Okay. And we haven't been perfect. Okay. But we've been faithful. Mm. You don't expect me to be perfect, do you? <laughs> no, I don't expect you to be perfect. <laughs> All right, but perfect I am for perfect. Me. I'm perfect. <laughs> perfect for me. All right. All right. Okay. You're perfect for me. Yeah. But, but you have to be in the game. And, and once she loses that faith in you, all that other stuff don't even matter. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. You all met on a bus stop. Yes. Tell me about those days when it was fresh and new and lovely. When we met at the bus stop, I was there as coat, and he offered me his coat, which I thought was cute, because I'm like, you know, I'm a big girl. I can't fit that coat. But he gave it to me anyway. So we got on the bus together, we talked, and, like, we exchanged numbers. So when I gave him my number, he didn't have a phone, he didn't have a pen. Like, he remembered my number. And it took oh. me about an hour and a half to get home from where, you know, his drop-off point was. And as soon as I got in the house, he called. And it just felt really good. Like, those are the good days, like, stuff like that. That wasn't a player move, was it, where you gave her your coat so she'd have to see you again? Was, was that it? Uh, it was just to get on the bus, because I knew the bus was going to be another 45 minute wait. So uh, I refuse to let her stand the coat around her. Yeah, because, see, I've done that. You, okay. know, you know, you visit someone, you leave, you leave something with her, so you have to right. come back and, yeah. I've, right. So I, 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 I know that player move. I just want to make sure. Okay, I don't remember that player move. Who was that player move with? See how well it worked? Uh, see whatever, how well it worked? Man. Okay. <laughs> All right, so after y'all decided we gonna be us, what mm -hmm. did that look like? It was fun. Okay. It was constant. Like, we always saw each other. We talked every day, all day. And he enjoyed how loud I was and 
how much attention I get, because I don't seek it. I just get it. <laughs> and he just was, he just always made me smile. He always made me feel special. I always felt important to him, so. So, I mean, it was good, but something happened because you're here today. So tell me about that. Well, it was rough for me, because I ain't gonna lie. I knew that with me coming into a relationship with studio hours and inconvenient time frames, it's gonna be a whole lot. Do you believe that? I want to give him a chance, but a cheater is a cheater. <laughs> and it doesn't matter how much love you have in your office, I'm like, if it's not stopping you from doing something that hurt me. Mr. Haskell, you know, you sound like a smooth talker, and I, and I get that, Definitely but... Definitely that, if, Your Honor. If, if you were... That. <laughs> yes. And, and, and I understand that, but, you know, if you were that you smooth... You understand that. I understand that. <laughs> Whatever, man. There you go. That's yeah. right, that's right. But if you were that smooth of a talker, you wouldn't be here. Absolutely. So, so Ms. Jones... What went wrong in this relationship? Well, after a while, it just got to a point where it wasn't making sense that he was keeping them out with six, seven days a week. And it was like, I just started getting really suspicious. I would tell her, look, babe, I'm on my way home, right? But guess what? In the process, I'm not driving. So the person that's driving, they want to stop and drop X, Y, and Z off. So you didn't have your own transportation? Right. No. Okay. I called his mom's phone one day <laughs> because at the time he was using his mom's house phone as our means of communication. And I called her phone one day. A woman answered the phone. No, it was not his mom. This young lady oh. is telling me while I'm explaining to her that I'm the mother of his child, she's like, no, I'm his girlfriend. <laughs> yes. What is your explanation for that? It was my mother friend. Is your mother's friend. Attracted to me. Attracted to you. <laughs> right? Because right. you got it like she that. She see my potential. Uh -huh. So she figuring, okay, yeah, let me tell this girl that's calling for you and I'm his girlfriend that for hopefully for her to fall back so she could take her place. Your Honor, in the midst of this conversation that we were having when she was telling me that she was his girlfriend, right. I was having her call other women that she was informing me was calling the phone on other occasions. They were saying, yeah, you know, we're more than friends and all this stuff. It was just a mess. How many women were we talking How about? Three. Three Not different including women. the young woman that answered the phone. So a total of four. Four women. Did you ever find out if there was something going on with woman oh, number one? Oh, definitely found out stuff was going on with woman number one. As a matter of Tell fact... Tell me about that. They have a child together now. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so this child's been born during your 10-year relationship? Yes, ma'am. And it's his baby? It's his baby. All righty. I didn't want to admit it because I was like, you know... No, I don't know. No, we, we really you don't. You said you didn't want to admit it because... I was weak to the... You were to weak the, to the flesh? Yeah, I was weak to the flesh. And uh -huh. I fell victim, and we had unprotected sex, and one thing led to another. But that was the only occasion that I actually engaged in. You only right. had sex with her one time. Yeah, with that one, with one, woman number one. Fortunately, she got, she had a beautiful, my beautiful daughter. So you know. So what's going on with you and your ex? I had a night with her, you know, and then our daughter came. So it's like I have to be a father to my child, but a relationship with you, we don't have okay. to have. But Mr. Haskell, look, you're a singer, not a dancer. <laughs> right. You're dancing around this issue big time. Okay. Yes, you know. Your Honor. Get him. I sung into the wrong song that night. <laughs> uh, uh, apparently. Yes, I did. And I was, I was being a bad guy. So, Ms. Jones, I see you brought a witness with you. She can come yeah. forward. Thank you. Would you give the court your name, please? Ayana Allen. I'm Ms. Jones's best friend. Okay. What do you know about this situation? This particular situation, you know, my birthday was in February. Okay. Um, I went to the mall, of course, to give me some outfits, you know, jazz up for my birthday. And I go to the um, little food court in the mall, and I see Mr. Haskell and this lady and this child. They were together like they were a couple. No. Okay. I mean, what what does that look family. like? I was, yeah, that was my What does pleasure. that look like? That looks like this. Holding hands? Yes, but that's she not dying, her girlfriend. Huh? Were you holding her hand? Truth be told, I had... Yeah, we, we want the truth to be told. Uh, All right. I was watching my daughter at my mom's house. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want all this, this pre-stuff. I want to know, were you sitting in the food court holding, holding hands with your baby's mama? No, right. Did your hands touch? 
Probably from my daughter to her, as it's connecting oh. her, getting my daughter's hand. So in the process of maybe touching your daughter, your hand may have accidentally touched your baby's mama hand at the very instant... From her vision. Miss Allen saw you. From her vision. From her vision. Miss Allen. Double, double vision. I don't miss nothing. <laughs> All right. I was at work one day, and then I went through my phone, and I had a message on Messenger. She wasn't my friend, so I had to accept it. So when I opened it, she sent me a picture of my one-and-a-half-month-old son and his father laying in her bed. Oh. I have something, if I could show this to you. Ron, Ron would you grab that, please? Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, I can't wait to see this. Truth be told. <laughs> please. <laughs> Thank you. This is the text messaging between the other woman and myself. This is a picture at the bottom of my son and his father laying in her bed with the caption, add this to the collection. Like the collection you have on Facebook? I guess. Oh, that's right. bold. I guess. All right, Mr. Haskell, this isn't paranoia. This is photographic evidence. Yes, this is my first time, because I had... I was forced to have my son this particular day. Did okay. you have a relationship with the woman's bed you're laying in right no, there on that Honor. picture? No, Your Honor. Because I'm a performing artist, she figured, listen, he's one of the best, so let's accommodate him. He had the... I had my son with me. So, so I, she just let I you lie in her bed? There. Yes. That's it. Late night hours. M Mr. Haskell. I, you you yeah, don't I, even have words for this. <laughs> and let me just tell you, it takes a lot to shut this down, to just get it where it can't... Uh, it can't make a sentence. It can't pull a word out of the hat. I don't know what to make of this guy. I mean, I... <laughs> this is just a series of misunderstandings. That's it. He is the unluckiest guy you in know, the world. Witnesses... <laughs> you know, when witnesses see you holding hands with someone else, it's really not that it's something else. And let me just say this. It looks bad. Yeah, it does. It smells bad. It, it, but it's not. But it is bad. But it's, it, it is bad. It is. You just roll that around in your head. Now, you yeah. have a countersuit for some damaged goods. Is that correct? Yes. Tell me about that. <clears throat> well, she went to work early that day, but she knew that I had studio hours, like, wasn't even no long studio. It was only a 45-minute session. I needed to lay down some quick tracks or whatever. So she came home for work. But when she came home from work, she had a different attitude about approaching me leaving the house. And as I'm getting dressed, I'm feeling I look up. She like, where you about to go? I said, baby, you know I got 45 minutes to drop this little track and I'll be right back, you know? My phone get the ring and my ride outside. So she stopped me from going out the front door. So I immediately go through the, uh, the living room to go through the back door. She chased me, stopped me from going out the back door. So I'm juggling back and forth from the front to the back door and finally I made it out the front door, right? Jumped in my ride, boom. So I'm on my way, drop down the studio, go to the studio, lay down my tracks, come home. I'm a, I, I had some gym clothes I had to wash. I was gonna play basketball later that week. So boom, I go dig in my bag. And next thing you know, my clothes are bleached, like. All right, hold on. Did you bleach your stuff? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not mad at you. Let, let me just... <laughs> Miss, Mr. Haskell, if that's all she done to you in light of everything, <laughs> you kind of got off cheap, brother man. I'm just saying. Okay, tell me about that. Why did you bleach his clothes? I feel like he bleached his own clothes. Like, all his fame and all his desire to get out here and be in the spotlight, he didn't want to be there for me when I needed him to. So I figured you don't need no clothes, you don't need nothing, you need what you have on at the studio, and you'll be good in life. All right, and Mr. Haskell, you said in your court papers that the value of the clothes that she bleached was $200. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, Mr. Haskell, we will rule on the countersuit in a moment, but first we need to get to the love suit. Ms. Jones, you said you believe he has been cheating in this last year. Mr. Haskell, you said you have not been cheating in this last year. No, I haven't. I know I haven't been cheating. Okay. In order to get to the bottom of this, the court has engaged the services of licensed private investigator Todd Redding. Uh, Ron, would you please escort Mr. Redding into the courtroom? Yes, sir. Mr. Redding, how are you? Fine, Your Honor. In this case, you had a polygraph examination performed on Mr. Haskell. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. Mr. Haskell was asked, has he had sexual intercourse with his ex-girlfriend since July 2016? Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. And what was his response? 
Your Honor, his response was no. What did the lie detector show? What did the lie detector show? There was a significant response to the question, which indicates deception. Mm. It was cold when they gave me that test. And I told him. Wait, you, it was cold when they gave you yeah, the lie detector test. Yeah, it was cold in that time. It was cold. Somebody. Darling, how are you feeling? How I knew I would feel. <laughs> is it your worst fears being confirmed? It is. Mr. Haskell? It looks bad, but... It is bad. It doesn't look bad. It is bad. This doesn't look... I mean, we moved from paranoia all the way over to yeah. deceptive results from the lie detector test. Can you admit to her that you have not done what you've been telling her based on this? I mean, this is your chance to, to tell the truth. The truth is... I did do it. Hallelujah. I, I, okay. okay. Just tell the story. Tell the story. I did do it. I apologize, sweetheart. From here on out, I promise to dedicate our okay. time. Okay. You know what? Apologies are easy. They're a dime a dozen. The hard part is saying, I am committed to you in this relationship and then doing it. Can you do that? That's what she needs to do. Ms. Jones, what do you plan to do? I don't know. I need some time because I can't give you an answer right now. I'm really hurt, but I know how I feel about him and I know what our family and my relationship with him means, so I just need a little bit of time. Okay. So, we still have to rule on the countersuit. You admitted here in court that you poured bleach on his clothes. Yes, Your Honor. And you said the value of it was approximately $200. You're not disputing that either, are you? No, Your Honor. It breaks my heart to make the ruling I'm gonna have to make. But you cannot destroy other folks' property, even in anger. Our ruling is for the defendant for $200.